Hi, I'm Edgar, and this is the first of a three-part video series on the Warlord Games and Italeri M3 Stuart light tank in 156 scale. Now, this kit has quite the reputation. I've heard from several places that it doesn't go together properly. It's flimsy and generally poorly designed. However, I've had a good look at the kit, and I disagree. I think that the plastic parts are just fine, and once you work out how they should go together, they do fit. It is, on the other hand, the instructions that are misleading, and I'll talk about that as I build it. As this kit will feature in three videos, I'm going to space them out with other videos in between. So this first part video is my usual building of the model. The second part will be in two weeks' time and feature my usual painting of the model. There will then be an extra third part in four weeks' time showing that the kit pieces do go together very well actually and it's the instructions to blame. And also I'm going to throw in some interesting 3D printed stuff that I designed for it. You'll notice here that I have a platoon version of the Stuarts, which essentially is just three sets of the plastic sprues, and the sprues are the same as if you bought just a single tank separately. And so finally, I can begin. The kit comes on two sprues. One has the wheels and armor panels, and the second has the hull, tracks, and all sorts of small pieces. The instructions are... well, the instructions are here and I'll show each page as I usually do in case you've lost yours or need to check something. The first page shows five different variants that you can build with a symbol for each that will appear throughout and this is one of the things that causes the difficulty in understanding the kit. These alternate ways of building it do pose some back and forth where you have to be careful about checking which features you want and if you want to follow an exact variant or make a slightly different one that isn't necessarily on the instructions. I will be building an M3A1 Stuart in American service but without the whole flamethrower or pintle machine gun. To get started all variants have the same tracks and one point to mention is the top section of track is marked as number 14 for both sides in both the instructions and on the plastic sprues. But the top two pieces of the track are not the same, and they have missing teeth that go on the inside edge of each track, so that the return rollers on the main piece fit. But before we put the tracks on, we have to put the outside half of the drive sprockets, which have a somewhat loose D-shaped keying, and so it's important to make sure that these line up as your polycement sets. The front piece of track goes into the drive sprocket, and I'd advise anyone to glue this piece in first as the idler wheel at the back is a smooth wheel, the tracks can move around slightly on it, where on the front, on the drive sprocket, they pretty much need to be exactly in the correct place. The horns of the tracks are hidden on the inside of the drive sprocket, and the tiny bumps to the side are the bits that link into the teeth of the sprocket. I used the top section of track to ensure that the tab on the front of the track piece fit into the slot on the top track piece, and I glued them both into place. The front lower piece is next, which has one link at a slight angle. It's very subtle and it's almost something that you might not notice. This slightly angled track has to go up front at the top, just slightly turning around the drive sprocket, because it will not fit the other way around. I then moved on to the rear section of track around the idler wheel, which I had to slightly trim one of the tabs to ensure it fit correctly. Each of these fit with the track teeth on the sides of the idler wheel, otherwise these and the last lower piece of track all fit the tab in slot around the run, and if you've lined up the front it should all fit. Just as the cement is setting, I like to gently press down from all angles to ensure that the tracks are sitting against the various wheels of the system so that there are no gaps or wonky links. And this is especially advised on the M3, as the tracks are quite small, they are a little bit flexible. And of course, I can put together the other side in the same way, but mirrored. And with the tracks complete, they can be glued onto the lower hull, but I actually prefer to paint these separately, and so I will save that for later. The upper hull fits nicely into the lower hull so long as you clean the sprue injection points properly. But first, a tiny machine gun. There is a mounting ring and the gun itself, which fit into the hole on the hull. 
and that means you can position it to any angle you like, although I went with straight forwards. Unfortunately, this is not an adjustable piece, so if you don't glue it in, it will fall out. And I did need to be careful when gluing the hull together to not just push this out of place accidentally. The front of the hull has a peg and hole on the left. Oddly, on the back there is a peg hole, but no corresponding peg, rather just a tab inside acting as a ledge. The ledge only exists on the right side, and so the left side sort of does wobble a bit at this point until you put your choice of adhesive around the join, which will make it nice and secure. And whilst that's set, I held the front firmly to ensure that the gap would stay closed, and then added extra thin cement to all of the edges that touch so that it binds securely all of the way around the model. Whilst it was slightly uncomfortable to hold this model-making gang sign, I kept holding whilst I fitted the back panel. And I did have to look up pictures of a real M3 tank so that I knew which way up this goes, as the instructions are not clear. The keying is biased in one direction, but you can easily fit this upside down. And just to be safe, I checked the tracks would fit before I let go of the model. Moving on, we have this utterly tiny horn, siren, light, antenna, don't know, tiny thing. The instructions seem to want to point in roughly the area that this hole next to the machine gun is. However, it's unclear and other pictures in the instructions don't show this part in its final position. Now moving on to fill out the armor panel holes on the hull, and you can choose between the earlier M3 panels with loads of rivets, or the later M3A1 with no rivets, which is the version I'm going for. And of course I want loads of riveted armor panels for the bits box. The front piece has a little bit of overlap, and these are so that the second pieces, the kind of right angle trapezoid, can fit in behind it tightly against the hull and fill in that overlap. The third pieces, rectangles, go in next, and these again have one end angle that sticks outside the main hull. And then the final piece that goes on the side has an angle surface that matches that, fills in the overlap, and completes that shape. This is another part that I've seen people struggle with. The parts do fit fine, but the instructions are not very clear, and this kind of assembly technique isn't particularly intuitive. Those front-facing side pieces have holes for machine guns, which I'm not using, but there are covers for them as well. I found that they were strange with two pegs, even though there's only one hole for them to glue into, and I think one is supposed to be covered by a storage box, but I've decided not to use the storage box, and so I'll use both of the round machine gun covers, although there is a riveted square version as well. There's also one final armor panel on the rear, which has a spade on it, because every model in my American army has to have a spade, that's just the rules. Now I always have to talk about the headlights of these World War II tanks, and these are some of the easiest to fit. The headlight and headlight guard are one piece, making them far easier to install than other kits, although they are still fairly small. These seem to go in pressed against the sides of other features of the front track guard, but again, the instructions are not entirely clear. There is an antenna that goes on the back, keyed so that it sits at an angle, and this does prevent the turret from turning all the way around, but you still get like 359 degrees of movement, and it is towards the back, so it's not that much of an inconvenience. I realised at this point that I forgot the air filters that are on the first page of instructions. I mistook them for an optional part from a different version of the tank, but rather these go on all versions. These are simply two pieces that fit together nicely, and their sprue gates line up and so you can scrape both of them off at the same time. And then they fit into this kind of hole and slot on the back of the tank quite securely. And with the hull finally finished, I can move upwards to the turret. I'll build both, but first I want to build the later rounded version turret for my M3A1 variant. The two sides fit together over the turret ring, and then the top of the turret fits on top. There is a little bit of a step at the top of the side panels, and I had to just lightly press the roof into it to make it fit, and then on the back of the turret there is a hatch that covers most of the join, and so it looks pretty good overall. 
I wanted to use the American Commander for this vehicle, and so I put one of the hatches open and the other closed. The other turret in the kit is the earlier M3 with the flat sides, and it goes together in a similar way but with a few extra pieces. The first main sides and the turret ring are the same, as is the first layer of turret roof into the same kind of step. There is then another layer of turret, with two more pieces that line up together on the roof, and the hatch goes on top. You can of course glue the hatch closed, or as I want to use the commander again, there is a support so that the hatch only opens so far, and this is probably so that the commander can reach it and close it quickly. The instructions for these bits, again, aren't terribly clear, but it does support the hatch once glued into place, and you might just need to look up some pictures of some real tanks for reference. You'll notice that neither turret has the gun yet, and that's because there is only one, and I wanted to make a copy for the second turret, and you'll find more about that in part three coming soon. The first piece is the turret front, which does just fit, even though my turret was assembled long enough ago that the cement is fully cured. The gun has trunnions that line up with two concave supports on the front, but only one on the inside of the turret, and it's just enough to hold it in place and have it elevate, but it likes to pop out of place as you fit it. I usually like to keep turret rotation and gun elevation, but in this case I may end up just gluing that so that it doesn't pop out of place. There is also a gun mantle, and I would recommend putting the glue at the base of the gun rather than on the mantle so that you don't smear it all the way down the barrel when you fit this part. Lastly, there is this utterly tiny part, the coax machine gun, which very carefully goes into place next to the main cannon. And so, there it is! With a lot of tiny parts, the M3A1 built. I'll show the earlier M3 turret in the third video once I've finished the work I'm doing on that. The kit as a whole isn't actually as bad as people say, but I certainly see why it's not as popular as other kits made for wargaming. The hull pieces are thinner, and there are many tiny pieces to break off. In addition, the instructions are pretty poor, misleading and outright incorrect in some places. Now I had the advantage of going into the kit knowing that it would be difficult, and so I spent extra care to line everything up, and it does line up correctly without any gap filling. In fact, a little bit of cement squeeze out here and there works nicely as well runs. I have to admit that it's not the best kit that I've ever built, but it does look pretty good, and it didn't take that long to build. And I certainly think, for the most part, this kit is strong enough for gaming, as long as you aren't ridiculously rough with it. But anyway, comments in the comment section down below, as always. I will post a link to the other videos in this series as I release them in the description box, so check that out as well. But for now, I'm Edscar, always will be, and thank you very much for watching.